Welcome back. Now you have basic understanding of probability. Next, let's see what conditional probability is and how to compute it. Knowledge of conditional probability is essential for analyzing the relationship between variables. Suppose we throw a six-sided die. What is the probability of getting a one? It may be a piece of cake for you. It is 0.166666. Let me ask you another question. We throw a die and we get an odd number. In this case, what is the probability that it is a 1? In this case, a condition exists. The pip is an odd number. So, there can be three patterns, 1, 3, or 5. So, in this case, we need to compute the probability under this condition. So, the probability is 1 divided by 3. So, it is 0 0.33333. In this example, we need to consider additional information for calculating the probability. The additional information is that the pip is an odd number. Here, the additional information works as a condition that limits the possible values of the outcome. It is an example of conditional probability. In a more general way, conditional probability refers to the probability of occurrence on an event on the condition that another event occurs. More specifically, A given B's conditional probability is the probability that an event A occurs on the condition that an event B has already occurred. The conditional probability of A given B is denoted as P parenthesis A vertical bar B. Let's consider another example. Suppose we have 10 balls and 5 of them are blue and 5 are green. And all of them are numbered in this way. And suppose we took a ball out of 10 and it is a green ball. In this case, what is the probability that we get an odd number? We can rewrite this problem as what is the probability of getting an odd number on the condition that the ball is green? It is a problem of conditional probability. So, Let's define event A as getting an odd number, and event B as getting a green ball. Here, all possible outcomes are conditioned as event B. So, for this conditional probability, the denominator is the green balls only. And the numerator includes only green balls with an odd number. So. The denominator is event B's frequency, and the numerator is the frequency of A and B's intersection. The answer is 0.8. So, this is the formula for computing the conditional probability of A given B. We can rewrite this formula. Let's divide the denominator and the numerator by the total number of possible outcomes. In the ball example, it is the total number of balls. Frequency of an event divided by the number of possible outcomes represents the event's probability of occurring. So, we can rewrite this formula as the probability of intersection of A and B divided by the probability of B. Using this formula, we can solve the problem of ball example in this way. Conditional probability is more notable in a case where two events are statistically dependent. Remember the example of throwing a die two times, where we get all the numbers two times in a row. This example can be considered as a conditional probability. 
That is, we want to compute the probability of getting an odd number in the second throw on the condition that we get an odd number in the first throw. By applying the formula of conditional probability, we can get the answer. It is one half. It is the same as the probability of event A. This is evident considering this equation, which holds only when event A and B are statistically independent. In this case, two events are statistically independent, that is, the outcome of the first throw does not affect the outcome of the second throw. If the two events are statistically independent, the conditional probability of A given B equals the probability of event A. Let's look at statistically dependent example, students' grades of algebra and calculus. Suppose the probability of getting a grade of a standard pass is 50%, both in algebra and calculus. Let's regard this problem as conditional probability, where students get standard pass in calculus on the condition that the grade of algebra is standard pass. Here, event A is getting a standard pass in calculus, and event B is getting a standard pass in algebra. Let's depict the students who get the standard pass in algebra by a square, and who do not in a circle. Students who pass algebra are more likely to pass calculus too. So, event A and event B is statistically dependent. In such a case, the probability of A given B is not the same as the probability of A. Let's see a famous data that was analyzed by Dr. Bikel and colleagues. It is known as UC Berkeley admission data. The crosstab shows the data of applicants of UC Berkeley's admission in fall 1973. There were 12,763 applications to the 101 graduate departments and interdepartmental graduate measures. 8,442 of them were male, and 4,321 were female. The table shows that 44.2% of the males and 34.6% of the females were admitted. So it seems that male were more likely to be admitted. How do you think? However, when you look at the data by department, we can see a different landscape. According to the author's analysis, only four of the 85 departments were significantly biased against females, and six were significantly biased against males. So, why is that the admission appear to be biased toward male in the previous table? We can see the reason in the scatter plot. The x-axis represents the percentage of women applicants in each department. The y-axis represents the total percentage of applicants admitted in each department. That is, the y-axis represents the easiness of admission. And the size of the square represents the number of applicants. The larger the square is, the more people apply to the department. The scatter plot shows a weak negative relationship between the two variables. On average, the proportions of female applicants were high in departments that are hard to get into, and low in those easy to get into. Besides, this tendency is more pronounced in departments with large numbers of applicants. This table illustrates the phenomenon by using two hypothetical university departments. In both departments, the admission rates of men and women are exactly equal. In mathematics, 50% of males and 50% of females were admitted. 
In social warfare, 33% of males and 33% of females were admitted. Based on the admission rate, we can say that social warfare is more difficult to get into than mathematics. And while there are more male than female in mathematics, there are more female than male in social warfare. That is, as with the previous plot, the proportions of female applicants were high in departments that are hard to get into and are low in those easy to get into. As a result, in total, the admission rate of female is lower than that of males. In this way, a conditional probability can provide us with a different picture of a dataset. The phenomenon Yoshi Berkeley admission data tells us is called Simpson's paradox, described by a British statistician, Edward Simpson, in 1951. Simpson's paradox is a phenomenon where a trend that appears in several groups can disappear or reverse when those groups are combined. Let's look at these scatter plots. In each plot, the red diamonds show a positive relationship where, as x increases, y also increases. However, when we aggregate this data, an opposite trend appears. As we can see, as x increases, y decreases.